Hi, I'm Hannah from the Planet Tuna team, and we want to ask you a question. Is there any connection between bacteria and the tuna in this can? I don't mean the kind of bacteria that can upset your stomach. I mean bacteria that live in the ocean. Until a few decades ago, these bacteria were almost completely unknown, even though really they rule the marine ecosystems. And without them, there would be no tuna, canned or otherwise. Let me introduce you to one of them. Please meet Prochlorococcus, a photosynthetic bacteria. Hi, how come scientists weren't aware of you? Well, the thing is, ocean bacteria are invisible, even using a normal microscope. But now there are new kinds of microscopes that can detect them, and more importantly, there's metagenomics, which consists of looking at the bits of genetic material in a water sample and figuring out what bacteria they belong to. So what does this have to do with tuna, you might ask? A full-grown bluefin, the largest of the tunas, can weigh more than 400 kilograms, or 880 pounds, whereas a liter of water can contain 100 million prochlorococcus. But without those invisible bacteria, there would be no tuna, because bacteria are an essential part of the ocean food web, and all the pieces of the puzzle are connected. Let's start with the top predators. We all know that the big fish eats the little fish. The little fish eat other smaller fish, crustaceans, and cephalopods. These little guys feed mostly on zooplankton. Zooplankton consists of all sorts of tiny animals, including the larvae of fish and invertebrates, tiny crustaceans, and unicellular protists all floating around in their salty home. And what do they eat? Well, most of them eat phytoplankton, which are like tiny plants because they make their own food using water, CO2, and sunlight. Phytoplankton include microalgae like diatoms and dinoflagellates, and also a whole bunch of photosynthetic bacteria, such as our friend Prochlorococcus. She's especially abundant in nutrient-poor waters, which happen to be where tuna like to go to reproduce. Here we see her basking in the sun and feasting on carbohydrates that she makes out of CO2 and water. Hmm, and Prochlorococcus just reminded me that on top of that, she and the rest of the phytoplankton produce 50% of the oxygen we breathe. But in order to live and reproduce, phytoplankton need more than just water, CO2, and sunlight. They also need elements like phosphorus and nitrogen. Correct, Proclo? Yep, she says that's so. The same is true for a cabbage or a lettuce. It needs to absorb nutrients from the soil in order to grow. A gardener piles up plant remains and manure in order to make compost. Bacteria and fungi decompose it and liberate nutrients. The gardener then puts it on the veggies to make them big and happy. The sea is no different. The leftover food, dead bodies, and the droppings of all those creatures, visible and invisible, drift slowly down towards the bottom. On the way down, this falling trash gets recycled by bacteria. These bacteria are not photosynthetic, and they don't make their own food. Instead, along with other microbes, they take apart the falling bits of trash and absorb what they need. There's a lot left over, and now it's in the form of small molecules that are exactly what the phytoplankton higher up need in order to grow. So microorganisms create an excellent compost bin right there in the ocean. Thanks to these invisible recyclers, the phytoplankton has the nutrients it needs. Zooplankton feed on the phytoplankton. The zooplankton in turn becomes lunch for fish larvae and other mini-animals which in turn are food for fish and crustaceans and cephalopods, which are the favorite prey of larger fishes, until we're back at the tuna and the rest of the top predators. Scientists are working to fully understand the invisible part of the web. It's important if we want to know how marine ecosystems might react to such things as climate change and pollution, and if we want to make fishing sustainable in the long run. Without the invisible part of the food web, the entire web would collapse, including our beloved tuna, an important source of protein in much of the world. Aside from vegetarians, the rest of us humans are predators of the marine predators, and this means we too are part of the food web, and whatever we do will affect the entire rest of the web. Mm -hmm.